Hey guys, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Today I'm going to do another video about this T-Mobile 5G home internet. So this is probably my most popular series out there. I'm talking about, you know, I've had some previous ones of unboxing it, a one month review, and then um, some other um, things that they don't tell you about with this. So this one I'm talking about some other tips and tricks that I figured out over time of using it. Now it's been uh, about two months or so. Uh, perhaps a little bit more than that now and there's lots of people out there that are getting these devices learning about them um, I also talk about um, turning off the Wi-Fi you know how I'm using a, um, a, a whole separate Wi-Fi mesh system to actually um, connect all my devices and then this device is really just hooked up by Ethernet to the WAN port of that router so I'll talk about that and turning off the Wi-Fi, uh, things to watch out for on this guy as far as overheating, as far as it turning off and whatnot. Um, and now I'll show you some of these um, these settings in there, as well as firmware updates on this guy. So I have gotten a firmware update. So I guess first what I'll do is I'll talk about that firmware update. So these devices early on, which um, you know I'm one of these people that they got them and the end of the firmware number is .0143 and there's all kind of problems with these devices as far as them uh, if you know they have a backup battery in there but if you unplug them to try to move them around not only does the device uh, reboot itself but the Wi-Fi doesn't work on it nor does the Ethernet work on it and um, the other downside is sometimes, and I don't think anyone's figured out why exactly, but it would do a factory reset. So if you were like me, um, you you plugged it in, you got it set up, you maybe messed with some settings, changed the uh, the Wi-Fi name or passwords, and then you unplug it to move it around to try to get better signal, and lo and behold, all your settings that you uh, made they now are um, gone, and it's back to the factory default. So. I try not to unplug it, so even right now when I'm trying to show it to you, I keep it plugged in. Um, there is a firmware update, and it's uh, uh, instead of 143, now it's 168. And so I've heard that some people are getting it pushed automatically to them. So if you have the device already, um, one day it might just update itself, and you can check in the, um, the, the web GUI and see what it's at. But there is a trick to get it to update um, by force and that is by resetting it to factory default and it appears from what I can tell when you do that factory um, reset one of the first things it must do is it, it must try to pull any kind of firmware update so to do a factory reset uh, you take a paper clip or a pen you know and there's a reset um, button there that's recess you press and hold it in and then if you look at the top screen it will actually, you know, after you hold it for like five seconds or something, it, it, it's telling you um, on the screen that if you keep holding it, I think you have to hold it for over 10 seconds and then it'll say, you know, release now and then it will do a factory reset. So um, that's what I did and then it resets and then it goes back to its um, kind of startup page. You'll see like a, a language um, screen on there. And if you just leave it, Sit. Don't certainly don't mess with the um, the power on it. You leave it powered on and leave it sitting still. After a few minutes, all of a sudden you'll start to see a you know firmware updating, 20% loading thing. So it did that, and I got the the 168 update. What I'll tell you is I didn't really see a big difference. Um, some people online are commenting that they're getting um, better speeds and services, uh, especially for upload. So I'm sure it's it's a little bit better. I I perhaps um, am able to get onto the B66 band a little bit more often. Overall, though, my speeds have been uh, pretty good and consistent. With one caveat, every once in a while, and it seems like it's not just me. It seems like other people complain about this. You know, specifically last week, so like first week of March or something. Um, there would be times that all of a sudden my upload would go to like a sub one megabit per second speed. So like, you know, the download's working fine, but you couldn't even send the request to, to load a page or to load 
uh, some kind of streaming video and I went and did a speed test and lo and behold um, you know there's like it's a half megabit per second upload speed so for that one um, this is another trick that I learned because of the factory resetting issues that these things still have the way to reboot it what I do is easiest is I just go into the web GUI and you go down to the the system I'll, I'll show you guys this in a second you go to the system screen and then there's a reboot button there and that doesn't disconnect any of the power or have to flip the power switch at all so that's a way that you can reboot the device and I've never had any issue doing it that way and then all of my uh, my system works as normal so I've had a couple of those and like I said they were kind of concentrated to um, the first week of March um, and I don't know if that's a tower issue with with T-Mobile or they're doing something with the network but but that that did happen uh, a few times and then I even had um, today actually there was something going on where it said I was connected my router thought I was connected um, but I ended up rebooting it and I actually rebooted my ASUS system as well just to make sure I was back up and going again so uh, there still are a couple times when there's um, something going on and you have to uh, reboot it but I'm hoping new firmware will keep coming out and, and keep improving. Um, there are some um, information from the T-Mobile help desk specifically about things like uh, VPN, um, Xbox, um, you know, uh, play chat. Those are things T-Mobile is aware of and they said they are working to address. So they didn't give any timetables as far as when those um, things are coming, but they're aware of all the complaints uh, for some VPN users and then obviously for some of the gaming users. So those are things that are on their list to get improved. So I'm, I'm happy to see that. Now, the other thing that I was going to talk about in here is, is the Wi-Fi. So this does have a really good Wi-Fi um, uh, broadcast in, in, in my opinion. Um, you know as far as it has the 2.4 and then the low and the high frequency um, are sorry the low and high uh, 5 gig gigahertz um, and so the the high is the Wi-Fi 6 setup and it has good coverage the the downside is I've not been happy with their actual routing capability as far as um, quality of service or multi-user um, requests going through so that's where I've been using my Asus AI mesh system and I've been very happy with that I haven't had uh, a lot of problems but by, by doing it that way but the other thing that um, these things are kind of um, unique on is they put out a lot of heat uh, it's surprising right now I have my hand over this how much heat it actually puts out so one way to try to help reduce that is to lower the amount of work that this guy's doing and so turning off the Wi-Fi completely is, is one way you can try to help um, cool it down some and there is no fan in here it feels like it's fan but I think it's just um, the convection going on so some people have actually um, put a fan underneath the device to help blow air I you know that seems a little bit overkill I, I certainly don't need that uh, to happen here but some people are putting these things in um, outside enclosures like boxes um, to try to get better signal um, I guess I'll, I'll talk a little bit about antennas I'm not going to show you today exactly uh, how to do the antenna but I'll put a link in the description uh, there's a guy on reddit that has um, done a pretty good job of illustrating uh, with pictures and descriptions of, of how to connect an external antenna to these units it is um, feasible and it's actually not that hard there's no soldering you have to do uh, the case comes apart you can um, not destroy anything um, so that you could return it back to stock and so I'll, I'll touch on that um, in a little bit but back to the the regular Wi-Fi turning it off let me hop on the computer here and show you how to um, turn off all the Wi-Fi and that is actually one change that did um, happen with the firmware update was how you do that so let me go to that real fast All right, so now I'm in the web GUI for my gateway, and that's just the 192.168.12.1 uh, 
address in your browser if you're connected to it. Uh, one little uh, interesting note is I, I was a little bit um, surprised there, there is no issue in me connecting to this gateway if I'm on my AI mesh system and not directly connected to the router even with the app um, I, I kind of figured the app wasn't going to be able to connect to it but it, it is and, and part of that is because my system obviously I, I don't have a IP conflict because the gateway is in the um, the 12.1 um, you know IP range, and then mine is a um, uh, 1.1 range. So, anyways, um, in here you can see on the right is the firmware, um, which they call software version. So this is the 168 I was referring to in the past. I was at 143. Um, you can see all your statuses here, but what I wanted to show you was the Wi-Fi networks. And then, so I guess yours will look like this. Click networks, click on Wi-Fi networks, and then you have this 2. gig or 2.4 um, gigahertz, and then there's the five. So for turning off your Wi-Fi with the older firmware, I had to go into each and every SSID, um, and there's 12 of them total, four on the 2.4, and then so on the five gigahertz, then it's um, channels our SSIDs 5 through 12 and those are kind of split uh, between the Wi-Fi 6 and then this the standard um, 5 gigahertz low um, channels so the disable feature is really just this um, enable SSID I think that's the only one you have to check I've I've gone ahead and turned off both the broadcast the SSID and the Wi-Fi multimedia just to make sure but um, you know, so after you do that for SSID one, you have to hit save settings, and then you have to go to SSID two, and do the same thing. Hit save again. That was with the old firmware. What I noticed with the new firmware, the 168 firmware, is if you did it for SSID one, it would apply that same to two, three, and four. So it 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 kind of blocks them together. So on the five gigahertz um, section, you know you do want to make sure that they're all disabled for this SSID. And when I did it, when I turned it off on the um, the fifth one, it turned it off on six, seven, eight, and then you have to go back in to nine and turn it off. So really, just go through each one of these um, SSIDs and make sure that it's um, turned off. And then if it's if you did have to turn it off, click save each time, so that um, you know it's 12 steps um, potentially that you have to do to turn them all off. But once you do that, you can use your phone or computer and and scan the network and make sure that the um, the T-Mobile one, you know, in my case this T-Mobile CFCC does not show up, and that's that's the easy way to um, to do that. So, and then what I was gonna show you here is in the system page, uh, since I already logged in, um, typically it would ask you for the login to change the Wi-Fi network or the, the system page. You just click uh, reboot, and that's how I reboot the um, device. Now you also see there's also a reset, so instead of pressing and holding the button, you can just click this thing here. Firmware upgrade uh, doesn't work. Um, I mean, I guess it, it does work if you had the upgrade file, but uh, to my knowledge, no one has figured out how to get um, any kind of firmware upgrade file from T-Mobile. Uh, this would allow you to manually upload uh, a file to the gateway to, to change. So that's all I have for now. If you have any more questions about especially this T-Mobile uh, gateway, let me know where they are. You can ask them uh, as questions in the, uh, the comments below. And uh, feel free to even ask me to uh, to cover something specifically. I'm uh, more than open to make these videos. They're fairly quick and easy, and it's fun to see uh, how many people watch them and enjoy them. So thanks for watching, and take care.